Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Rajendra Roy, the Celeste Bartos Chief Curator of Film at MoMA and a member of the Selection Committee for New Directors, New Films. It's such a pleasure to have uh, our director here with us as part of uh, this presentation, late <laughs> presentation of New Directors this year. Uh, and on behalf of our colleagues at Film and Lincoln Center, it's a pleasure to welcome Filippo Meneghetti, uh, the director of Two of Us. Uh, Filippo, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, sorry, sorry, it can't be in New York. I'm sorry, it can't be I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> we we had such great plans, uh, but I have to. I'll just start by congratulating on all of your success, um, even despite uh, the changes in plans. Um, you were recently selected as the uh, official Oscar contender for France this year, which is an incredible accomplishment, especially for a first-time feature film director. So, hearty congratulations. Um, just wondering, it's been more than a year, right, since the film premiered at, at the Toronto Film Festival, I believe, in 2019, right? Um, how has it been? I mean, you've had quite an, uh, an unexpected, uh, you know, experience. Uh, well, you know, thanks first of all, then, you know, everything was unexpected this year, so I guess I'm just following the wave. Right? So, uh, yeah, it, it was, uh, I was thinking about it uh, two days ago when they gave me the news of, about the, uh, the fact that I'm candidate for uh, the film is candidating for France, uh, which was such a big surprise. And I was thinking, man, it was just one year and a half since I finished the film. So. The, the the life of the film it's so i mean toronto one year and three months ago two months ago seems like a lifetime oh. and so it has been for so many reasons so the first six months were amazing really uh touring and film festivals and and with the french release so actually meeting uh the audience and that was really really cool because you work for a long time for to make a feature especially the first feature yeah. Um, so I never I wasn't used to it. Um, so it was, that was amazing. And then it started to it went virtual, and then and I was really looking forward to come to New York. I was so happy about it. <laughs> and then whatever it is, what it is. But 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 still, the the journey of the film has been has been amazing, and actually uh, really going further than all my expectation, my best expectation. You know, my first feature. So no, it's Just, it's truly incredible, and I imagine there are some some good results from the change but i am also pleased to hear that it was able to be released in france so it, there actually was a theatrical release initially yeah it, actually it was in theater when the when the theater uh, closed i see uh, we, we were three weeks and a half into the uh the after the release so it you know it could have been better but still at least it went into theater and it was also released in other countries this summer in the netherlands you know countries that opened cinema then yeah that's strange well, yeah, one thing that I, I was thinking in relationship to the film is this story of, you know, separation and longing, it just resonates so much more profoundly for so many more people, perhaps, than it might have um, had there not been the lockdowns and the shutdowns and, and the celebrations um, that have been missed between families. And, um, you know, I know several uh, couples, trans, uh, Atlantic couples who have not been able to see each other because of the, the mm -hmm. lockdowns. I don't know, maybe just your thoughts on, on that element of the story and, and how that, um, that has changed in the, the last six months. Yeah, you're right. And actually, there was one thing I was uh, thinking about a few months ago, is that while uh, working on pre-production, I used to say to the set designer of the film mm. uh, that the apartment uh, had to look very cozy, uh, but in a way that will become almost strange. And this cocoon uh, should become later in the story a prison. Ah. Uh, so, and after we were all in lockdown, <laughs> I said, yeah. I didn't mean it like this, you know? <laughs> Not literally <laughs> a prison. So yeah. since there was, I was stuck for two months in my Paris apartment, which as all Paris apartment is not big. You know, yeah, so we, we understand that in New York, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know you do. So it was really, I, I really felt that. <laughs> yeah, no, but it, I mean, it, it truly is something, I mean, this is a powerful narrative either way. And um, most importantly, uh, because you found such incredible actors to portray the leads. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit about casting uh, Ms. Chevalier and obviously Ms. Sukova uh, in these, how, 
how that came about, what was your strategy to convince these incredible actors to, to work with you? Well, actually, uh, it is true that it was uh, a, a strange thing to do to, 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 as a first time director to go look for such experienced and wonderful and legendary actresses. Uh, well, uh, but it was pretty simple for, it might, it might be strange, but it, it was like this. Uh, we wrote the script together with, with Malison Bavarosmi, my co-writer, uh, she's a woman. And, 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 um, and then because for me it was important to have this uh, feminine uh, uh, woman touch and sensibility in the story. Uh, and then I always uh, knew that I was looking for two very different actresses. Uh, uh, because you know the the the, the chemistry uh, works better with two elements that are very different. You know that there's something that must sparkle or something. Yeah. So I, I always had this thing in mind, and I also uh, was looking for um, different backgrounds somehow for the actresses, like for the because I believe that the character. Uh, get nourished by by the, what the actresses has been doing before have been doing before so uh, barbara you know i don't need to present her she was you know such a su such a legendary actress and i always loved her work and yeah. and and somehow you know this idea of barbara sukova which is a german actress it is she's not really fitting in a, in a very small town in central france as much as her character doesn't so that was an element that interested me. Yeah. Uh, I, even the infinity audience don't know it. I believe, you know, you feel this kind of fan. And, and also Martin Chevalier, which is a, a legend in, in French theater, but she haven't done much cinema yeah. in her life, in her career, uh, really a little bit. And so the, I, I think that uh, I thought that that could be interesting because for the cinematic audience in France, meaning the French, I, I really didn't expect the film to show abroad. So in my, in my mind, the, the, for the French audience, uh, they don't, apart for the theater audience, they don't know her very well, not that well. And right. so she can melt into this character of uh, Madeleine Girard coming from this small town. So, you know, those are ideas. And then maybe they, they are in the film, maybe they're not, but I, I, I really believe that you have to nourish your process with this kind of reflection and ideas because it will mean something sooner or later somehow and 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 then we just send them the script and 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 they liked it and and we met and they were crazy enough to trust me and uh, and to be brave enough that's important because the very difficult things also, also to me was to find actresses that have their age and that are willing to show age in an honest way because our very first conversation with both of them was we're gonna shoot i'm gonna really do close up very close up uh very narrow close up and yeah. we are gonna shoot with no much no much makeup and that is really rare that yeah. an actress of that age is willing to do that with that kind of because it was uh, something very important to me as a, as a, as, a, as an uh, as an act, as a filmmaker, uh, about representing uh, the world, you know, and, and Asia. I was going to ask about that. What, what for you? I mean, this is your first feature film. What going in? What was most important to to you uh, to be able to tell, or in the in the manner you were telling your story? I mean, what was your your impulse for you to know that at the end this would be a mark of success beyond the, the exterior successes that you've had in, in the making of the film? What, what to you was most important? Uh, for, you know, it's, it's difficult to say because uh, it took six years to make the film, so I mean, to write finance and so on. So, you know, things are shaping, your life is shaping differently. So. But one thing for sure is that I, I started to think about the film a long time ago, because when, in the year of my formation, when I was a kid, I witnessed the story of, of two persons that are very important to me uh, mm. because they are the person that passed me the passion for cinema. Wow. And, and their story was much harder. And I always thought that if one day I had the chance to reach an audience, I would have loved to tell not their story because this, the film doesn't tell, doesn't tell their story. The story of the film, it, it, it is invented. We invented with, with, with mm. Melissa. Uh, but I wanted to, to reach an audience uh, just because I, I was so touched by their story at that time. And I, you know, probably if I just, uh, I, I, I was hoping that at the end of the film, I, I, I wanted to make of this story uh, a universal story, meaning that if I can, at the end of the film, 
uh, have somebody that is not at the beginning of the film uh, open-minded towards uh, the kind of story that I'm telling, if at the end of the film I, I, I make a small switch yeah. in their mind, then I succeeded. Uh, so that was really my very first point, and which doesn't mean to be militant or so. I just, you know, I, I, I try to, to reach and, to, and, and to, to build emotion for the audience that will later on, uh, you know, bring a thought. And, and, and so that, that was really my, my, my point. And, and I actually, if small story, uh, one of the f first screening in France, when we after right after Toronto, I started, you know, to do the avant premiere in France, uh, you know, before the release, and 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 I got a letter from uh, a woman in the audience. Uh, actually, the letter went to somebody that knows an actress, and so eventually I got the letter, like weeks a week after, and and it was so touching because this woman was saying that she really don't like gay people. She ate. Uh, she's very righty. And still, and, and she wrote this thing to me, which was super touching, that at the end of the film, she felt the, the emotion of the character in her flesh. Wow. You know, I was <laughs> overwhelmed. Yeah. So, yeah. So, th so that was really, really very important to me. No, I mean, I, that's another thing with, with time, right? And, and how things can change in un unexpected ways. I mean, so if you had started working and thinking about this film even six years ago, so much in the world, so much progress in in some parts of the world not all parts of the world has happened um, in terms of you know the, you know national recognition of of gay partnerships etc yeah. um, so that you know for new generations there is a normalcy that's you know inherited they understand mm -hmm. these uh, relationships as legitimate and and normal and then there's the generations that have still yet to learn and obviously communities that still have yet to learn mm -hmm. and I was wondering, I mean, we, we kind of claim Barbara as one of our own, seeing that she has lived a long time in Brooklyn with, with many of us and is a New Yorker and, and is often here at, at MoMA, in fact. But, you know, I'm wondering how, you know, given that it's set in a smaller town, what your relationship between a, like an urban or cosmopolitan, you know, in, in setting up these um, two characters who are quite different and, and how that energy of their difference is so important what is the difference between the rural setting and the urban setting? It might have been very different if this was set in a global capital, let's say. Oh, indeed, for sure. But, uh, well, you know, two things. Uh, I grew up in a small town in the Venice province in, in Italy, mm -hmm. very Catholic and, you know, in yeah. the 80s, I was an altar boy. So, you know, all this thing. So I know that kind of environment, like, <laughs> something like this. And, and uh, so, of course, the, the the story couldn't happen in 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 a, probably in New York, but then there was another level to it, uh, which is family and and being close to each other. You know, with people which you are close. I mean, just uh, I would like to bring the attention on, on Anne's character, the, the Madeleine's daughter. Yes, uh, she does what she does not because of, of homophobia. You know, she does what she does because she feels betrayed. You know, there are many levels. The, the story is not just about that. It is about the way, you know, I would, I would call it self-censorship, you know, the, the way in which uh, we build our own gaze on ourselves uh, yeah. based on what the society or just our family had told us that is right or wrong. But then, then we build it up and it gets into us and you cannot shut your own eyes on yourself. You got to live with it seven days per week, 24 hours per day. And, and, and that is very, very difficult to do because you, you cannot shut the door. And, 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 and that's what the film is about. And, and that's my key to get to other people that don't feel that kind of issue, I mean, the homosexuality and homophobia issues uh, right away, because I, I believe that we all deal with it. Absolutely. So, so, so that was the goal. And on the other end, uh, talking about the, the changes that has been uh, have been happening the last six, seven years, maybe and even before, if I think about the very first idea of the film, which has probably 12 years or I don't know exactly, I don't even remember. Uh, it's that progress is not a straight line, uh, you know, and I think we can say that <laughs> looking at politics and, and the, 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 the times we are living, it, it seems pretty clear to me. And, and so it, 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 and also, there are two things. Uh, while we were writing in Paris, we were having uh, the uh, gathering against 
the marriage for everybody, the wedding for everybody laws that was being passed at the, at the, at the National Assembly. And there were 100,000 people in the street yeah. while we were writing. And they were taking a bus to come to Paris on their Sunday <laughs> just to say they don't have to marry. So, you know, the, the, I was, I was uh, with Malisson, we were always saying, look, we are really writing a story that deals with what is going on there. Yes. So it is interesting and we have to do it then. It is a, it is a very good motivation for us, it was a very good motivation. Yeah. And so that, and also one thing I can see uh, that, that uh, for instance, where I'm from, but uh, it is not that uh, uh, consistent that one generation is more open. Some people in new generation are more open, but some, and I met them, are not more yes. open than their parents because their parents some, uh, sometimes they did 68 or in Italy we also have 76, 77 and, and, and they were very liberated and their children are not that much, not always at least. And so yeah. that's, that's that why. Not straight line that you were mentioning. Sometimes there's, you know, it goes backwards as well. But, you know, I, I also think about this film in the sense of its universality in the same way, in a way that your countryman Luca Juan Nino, you know, created a, uh, a falling in love for the first time story. Yes, it was a gay couple, but it really I've seen kids who look at that not not as a gay story, but as as a falling in love story for the first time. And, and in a way, I think, you know, the accessibility of, of this later in life love uh, story um, has a universality that, you know, maybe it's easier for people to recognize because if it was a traditional heterosexual story, um, like, yeah, I was thinking, you know, when I was growing up, I always had to project my experiences as a young gay guy onto straight stories, right? So now it's funny that straight people can project their lives onto gay stories because- That's a progress. To understand. <laughs> yeah, truly. That's the progress you were talking about, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And, and that's that where I feel, I feel responsible as a filmmaker yeah. to produce that kind of images because I believe it's very important. Yeah, truly. I really believe that. So um, I wanted to know about, you know, there's the, the film itself has a, a realism, which you, dis you discussed a little bit of wanting, you know, people to, to see the, the, you know, the, the authenticity in these characters. But the film also, you know, it balances intensities, right? There, there are moments when the tragedy seems, you know, uh, and the danger to, you know, um, the certain characters feels. How did you find that balance of, of intensities within the film? Uh, well, five years writing, <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, uh, but yeah, the idea was, uh, there was one, one, one key things uh, for me and, and, and my co-writer uh, was we, we wanted to avoid pathos uh, because the story could uh, go towards the melodrama. Yeah. And we really didn't want that. Uh, so, and that where that is where and when the idea of using the thrilling element comes in uh, so we change strategy I so we, and and using uh, first of all i like thrilling and suspense and it's something that really is speaking to me <laughs> you know somehow and 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 i feel uh, comfortable doing it uh and then uh, the idea was that that way we can still uh, bring the audience with us because you know it is a story in which there are sickness, there are sad things. So, but we we want the audience to stay with us, engage. You know, my work, my, the way I see things at least is how do I engage the audience? How do I trigger their uh, Im imagination uh, to to so that I don't push the emotion towards the audience, mm. but I create a space, a, a create room for the audience to gather their own emotion. And, and it might take time and it's going to be, but the idea is that it's going to be their own emotion. So it's going to feel uh, closer to them than, than whatever I can bring if, yeah. I, if I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. And, and, and that was really the element. In French, they have this, this word, la I'm not French, so, you know, it's funny, I, I'm using French word to describe things. But la uh, you know, the, the, this idea of keeping things. It, a little bit and so really the, the 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 idea was asking ourselves how can we do the most uh with the le with least with less yeah yeah that was the the thing 
which is, you know, again, a, a big accomplishment. A lot of times with, with first projects, everybody wants to put everything inside, <laughs> the most emotion, the most intensity. Um, it's good to save a little bit. So speaking of that, I mean, you've already in a way spent a professional lifetime on this project. I'm really curious what's next. You know, have you, have you already started on your next project? Uh, well, um, yes, we are starting right now again with the same producer, you know, Pierre Le Florentin and Laurent Bajor, because we, you know, we were really good with them and, and they, they, yeah. they kept, they kept working for five, six years to do this film. So, you know, to, and, and it worked well. So, um, but what we, I, so I'm writing again with, with the same uh, co-writer with Madison Morosmi and, and, um, we try, uh, you know, the, the funny thing, I, it for sure, it's going to be something very different uh, because that's what I like in filmmaking. You know, it's living different lives. I guess I was talking with Barbara about it. It's like for an actor, you know, because every time you, you start to work on a project, you're going to study some element and you're going to do research. And so you experience a whole new different part of the world of human uh, emotion. So, and I really love that. Uh, so, uh, but the, the, the strange thing is that I'm, I'm trying to choose carefully uh, the next step because uh, I believe that uh, my work is also try to resonate with what is happening outside. And since the year has been what it has been, yeah. uh, I, I'm really trying to understand before, you know, because I, 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 I you know, things are changing so much and so drastically and, and, and things that are before our eyes are so sometimes, sometimes shocking uh, that, that I, I want to be sure, I'm, sure, I'm, ne I'm never going to be sure, but at least I, I want to be very careful about choosing the right path and the, and the right things to, to, to go because I, I believe uh, that's the only way I can hope that it will resonate with people and so do what I want it to do. Yeah. Well, no, that's wonderful. Fine. Maintaining that authenticity, I think, uh, will be much appreciated by your new fans, um, and you will have many, many. And uh, before you can really dive into the new project, you've got a lot of work to do um, promoting this film, oh, yeah. uh, especially <laughs> now uh, in your new position representing France. And I, I know from years of experience that it's it's a big job. So good luck with that job and enjoy it if you can. Um, It'll be a brand new one. Nobody knows what this award season is going to be. So um, good luck with it. And, and thank you for spending time with us. And congratulations again. Beautiful. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Be well. Stay safe. Thanks so much. You too. Stay safe. Ciao.